In this video, I'd like to continue talking about geometric series, specifically looking at an example problem where we have this infinite geometric series and the common ratio here, the number we multiply by to go from one term to the next is a negative fraction. So to figure out what this actually adds up to, we need to first figure out what the common ratio is. And to do that, remember, we can just take any term in our series here, or if we had a sequence, we can take any term there and divide it by the one before it. Since remember, to go from one term to the next, if we call this r, we are just multiplying by that common ratio. So we can choose any terms we want, and it's usually going to be easier if you choose smaller numbers. So let's just choose 63 over 64 and divide it by this 21 over 8 here. So let's set that up. We have 63 over 64 and we're dividing by this negative 21 over 8. So make sure your signs are attached to it. And in fact, anytime you see a geometric series where the signs are alternating like this, you can be sure that your common ratio is a negative number. So let's actually carry out this division, since remember that if you're dividing by a fraction, it's the same thing as multiplying by that fraction's reciprocal. So it's really multiplied by this flipped, which is minus 8 over 21. And 63 over 21, we can simplify that. That's just 3. And 8 over 64, that's going to be 1 over 8. And the negative will carry along, and so we get minus 3 eighths. Now, just to check that this is indeed a geometric series, we should show that you actually do multiply by the common ratio to go from one term to the next. So we already used these two terms, so let's just prove to ourselves that 7 multiplied by minus 3 eighths does give us minus 21 over 8. And you can see that it does. So that just, first of all, lets us be confident that we found the right common ratio, and it also demonstrates this is geometric in nature. So to actually add up this infinite geometric series, we need to first call this some variable, and we'll call it s for sum. And we'll use our trick, like we have in previous example problems, where we're going to multiply this entire sum by the common ratio, which is the entire reason we spent time in the beginning figuring that out. So let's multiply s by minus, let me make a little bit of room, minus 3 over 8. And so we're going to distribute minus 3 eighths to each of these terms here. And so 7 times minus 3 eighths is just minus 21 over 8. Minus 21 over 8 multiplied by minus 3 eighths. That's going to give us plus 63 over 64. 63 over 64 multiplied by the common ratio will give us minus 189 over 512. It's essentially just the same terms, not including the first one. And this will go on forever. So... The trick now is that we're going to take our original infinite geometric series and we're going to subtract the new one that we created. And from there, we'll get an equation for s that we can actually solve. So let me clear a little bit of space and we can make some room here. So let's now write that we have s minus, well, this bottom one, which is minus 3 over 8 times s. And to subtract the bottom one from the top one, notice that if we go term by term, we have 7 here, but we don't have a 7 down here to actually subtract. So the 7 will remain, but we have a minus 21 over 8, and we're subtracting minus 21 over 8, which is really just adding 21 over 8, and so these will cancel out. And here we have 63 over 64 minus 63 over 64. Those will also cancel. We have minus 189 over 512, and we are subtracting a number from itself, and so those will cancel out. We will also get 0, 
and this will go on forever. Essentially every term besides the seven in this top geometric series will cancel out with every term in the new geometric series that we created. And so we're just left with this seven here. So this equation, when we take the top one and we subtract the bottom one from it, is just equal to seven. And from here, we just need to solve. And first notice that we're subtracting a negative, so we can rewrite this as s plus 3 eighths s is equal to seven. And when you take something and add 3 eighths of that same thing to it, we're gonna get 11 eighths, since really this is eight over eight s. And so we get 11, excuse me, s over eight is equal to seven. And to solve this, we'll just multiply each side by eight. So let me make some room here. And we get 11s is seven times eight, which is 56. And dividing both sides by 11, we get 56 over 11. So that will be our final answer, which of course is five and 1 11th. So, when our common ratio is a negative fraction, we can also add this up and get some finite answer. So like I said, this is really just five and one eleventh as a mixed number. So the basic conclusion that mathematicians draw from these infinite geometric series is that S will converge or will essentially add up to some finite value when R, our common ratio, is between one and negative one. So as long as it's a fraction, it could be positive or negative, then this is actually gonna add up to something. But if it's one or higher, then you're gonna be adding up an infinite amount of terms that do not get smaller as the term value increases. And we've looked at examples like that before where maybe you're adding one plus two plus four plus eight and so on and if you just add term by term, this just gets bigger and bigger as the term value increase. So this is, we would say, divergent. This diverges or it approaches infinity as the term value increases.